So what, I'm gonna, what we want to do is what we're going to go over are the principles. The principle for tr something, a generalized principle is something that's true in all cases. How many cases? How many exceptions? That's it. So if you follow the principles, it doesn't matter where the economy goes up or down, or up or down. When's the money made? When it goes down. Right, Ken? What, when do most people buy? Top. So there's two things that drive the markets. What are they? Greed and fear. So what we're going to do is focus on the principles. Please write this down. This is why it's called the Wealth Mastermind Group. What is the definition of wealth? This is from my mentor, Bucky Fuller. Please write this down. It's ability to survive. Built it to survive blank days into the future. Understand, we'll go into this as we get into the financial investing part of the Wealth Mastermind Group. I just want you to know why it's called that. I'm going to ask you, focus on this every day. There are two things I'm going to ask you to focus on every single day. This should occupy 90% of your thinking. Wealth is the ability to survive what? Blank number of days into the future. Are there different forms of wealth? Is your physical health a form of wealth? Is your mental health a form of wealth? Great. So I want to acknowledge there are different kinds of wealth. I just want to ask about the financial aspect, the financial aspect of wealth. Are you with me on this? Okay, thank you. Please write this down. Here are the conditions. Number one, you can never work for money again the rest of your life. So from this day forward, you can never work for money again. Two, you cannot sell your assets. You cannot co convert anything you own to cash. So the assets that the finance, the things that the financial industry calls assets, so you'll buy them and look good on your balance sheet, are actually not. The things the financial industry calls assets, so you'll buy them via your credit, which is how they pay, get paid. Are you with me on this? Are not assets. Okay, how many have jewelry? How many of you have jewelry? Can you sell it for what you paid for it? Is it an asset? If you download a balance sheet, does it show it as an asset? Great. Is it an asset? Can you get what you paid for your car? Is it an asset? Can you get what you paid for your furniture? Is it an asset? All right, it's clothing listed on there. Download a financial statement. Go Google and download a balance sheet. You'll see this. Assets and what? Liabilities. It'll have clothing on there. Who wants to sell their used shirts? They're valueless. So your car, your boat, your motorcycles, your jewelry, your furniture, your fishers, your equipment, all those things you've been lied to about, they're told were assets, so you'd borrow them and go into hock, which diminishes your borrowing capacity, which diminishes your wealth, because the way you get rich is through access and allocation of capital. You have to have access to capital. Some of you can't borrow because you leveraged the hill on junk you bought that's valueless. Right? So this is the extent you've been lied to. <laughs> I don't care if you believe me, but you know, go through your research. So number one, you can't sell them. That's why it's in quotes, assets, because they're not assets. But you can't sell them and convert them to cash. So number one, you can no longer work for money. Two, you cannot sell any assets. And three, you cannot you cannot lower your standard of living, which means you cannot move out of your big house into a condo or out of your condo into an apartment or out of your apartment under the bridge. So here's my question. If you did not lower your standard of living, you didn't convert anything you own to cash, and you quit working today for money. 
how many days into the future could you survive financially? Write the number in the blank. That's your wealth and that's your public education system for you. Good luck out there. <laughs> so it's not just things you have to learn. There might be some things you need to unlearn as we go through this process. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart one component at a time and go through it. Any questions? Does this make sense? Who has their number? Great. Who does not? Okay, great. Who likes their number? Nobody. Who does not like their number? Good. <laughs> Hopefully that will spur you to take action. <laughs> it did me, because mine was minus two million. <laughs> now, when I did this in 1987, it was minus two million. So we all have things to work on, right? All right, so that's why I'm glad you're here. So thank you for showing up. The next thing I want to go over really quickly before I bring Travis up, oh, please, please take this, put this on the wall, your mirror, somewhere where you'll see this every day. Please put this in your mind and focus on it. What you focus on expands. Remember, thoughts are things and they become real. You create your reality by the way you think. Hard work, highly overrated activity. The key to success is laziness. And incompetence. If you're big, strong, known to pick up, you're helping your friends move. <laughs> That's why I don't wear a muscle shirt to drive a pickup. <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> so this is it. And typically, this is not taught. What is this called? What's the definition of leverage? Money is a way to leverage. What's the thank you, nicely said. What is the definition of it? More with less. That's it. Please write this down. It's simply doing more and more and more with what? Less and less and less to the point you do everything with nothing. Please hear this. Everything with nothing. I see it's an un industrial, yeah, it's an industrial age idea, exchange labor for money. You want more money, you work harder. Well, look, the first 40 hours didn't get it. The second 40 aren't either. If you're doing something that doesn't work, stop. Are you with me? That's our definition of insanity, right? Yeah? Okay, so you have to look at the thoughts that you have, the actions you take, and the results thereof. What was the thought? What did you do? What happened then? And if you're not getting the result, then you have to change your behavior, but maybe you've got to change your thinking because most people have never had an original thought, sadly enough. It's not your fault. It's just We all went to school, and they told us what to think. They told us what to know, and then we told us when we knew it. It's called a grade. If you made an A, you were a good student. It means you memorized what they told you. That's a booby prize because you think you're smart. You don't know anything. <laughs> you learn via trial and what? What does the school system do? Punish you for making errors. It's called grading a test. Mistake, 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 mistake. What does the real world do? Real world do? Rewards mistakes. But you have to what? Correct them. Yeah? Look, I've made billions. People think I'm a stumbling, bumbling buffoon. They're right. But that's how come I know so much. I'm the biggest idiot in the room. <laughs> right, Yelena? I made millions of them since you've known me, right? Right. So, there are, three, there are several ways to leverage. One is money, as someone said, borrow. You have 100,000 cash, you buy a $500,000 property, you buy a million dollar property, you leverage it to the hill, hopefully the value goes where? Up. Some people think people are an expense. I consider them a highly valued asset. Look, if I may suggest or ask, can you really think you can do all this by yourself? So if you can just understand that if you'll find successful people, 
and study them, you'll see that typically they are on or part of a high-performance team. No one succeeds alone. You're only as good as your team. So we're going to play a game one of these days, probably in session 10 or 11. It's a synergy game. It'll show you that the myths around syn about the myths around synergy, that you're only strong the strongest link and you're only as strong as the weakest link. All those are not true if you understand synergy. We'll build you a, a physical model that shows that everything you know about leverage and synergy are not true. We'll build it for you right here in the room. It'll take about five minutes. It will stun you when you see it. Nonetheless, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> But I want you to understand the ways to leverage. It's money, people, how else? Products. Books, tape, CD, DVDs, online, streaming, video, whatever you can create. How many different ways can you tell your message without you having to go to one seller at a time telling your message? You don't want to be doing listing presentation after listing present. One on one is not leverage. This is why I'm suggesting you never put a buyer in your car. How many buyers can you handle at once? How many sellers can you handle at once? Can you handle 15? Can you handle 20? Can you have 50 listings at once? Yeah, if you have this. So the key here is not, you know, this old, it's all this old thought process. If it is to be, it's up to me. If you want it done the right way, you have to do it yourself. It's all that programming from the industrial age that doesn't apply in the digital age. So some things we have to learn and some things we have to unlearn. Yeah? So all this comes down to is this. This is why, please read Grinding It Out by Ray Kroc. Grinding It Out. Ray Kroc. McDonald's. Systems built an empire with teenagers. He didn't start cutting pickles and onions and cooking meat. He wrote systems. The systems are the grease, no pun intended, of organizations. Hamburgers, grease. <laughs> but he built an empire with teenagers. Most parents can't get him to clean up their room. No, you understand the house is a business, right? You have inventory, accounts receivable, accounts payable, customer service. You're negotiating if you've got teenagers. Can I stay out to one? No. Eleven. How about twelve? How about... Right? Okay. So, people run the systems, the systems run the business. You duplicate yourself with this. You don't need to go on listing presentations. You need a team that knows how to go on listing presentations. What business are you in? Education. See, I know you can do it. Can you teach others? So the way you leverage yourself is you teach other people to do what you've mastered. Yeah? Hello, you guys? I know you can do it. But someday you're not going to want to do it anymore. And then what will you have? So are you building an asset you can sell when you get done with all this? Are you building a business that has value that you can sell when you're done with all this? That's the question. So you have people, money, people, product, and what really allows all this to happen and for you to leverage this thing to the hilt is this, and that's why I'm going to bring Travis up and he's going to tell you how to do it. Travis Wright, please give him a hand. Travis came to me and answered an ad we were looking for someone to hire. So he came because he had a marketing company. He came to convert us to use his marketing company. Instead of him joining us, he wanted us to join him. And after we heard our presentation and our vision for the future, he decided to join us. So I'm really happy to have him. And he brings this technological education to our marketing department that I don't have. So I've asked him if he would mind sharing with y'all what he does back there, because when he talks to me, I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like talking to Yelena in her native tongue. You know, she's Russian. She comes in, and I, she goes, Dubra Yutra. I said, what did you just say? She says, good morning. I said, oh, good morning. <laughs> this is Travis. <laughs>